How's it going, everybody? 13. Episode number 13. Welcome to episode 13. 13. So welcome back for yet another show. Yes, we've made it to 13 episodes. Can you believe it? It's hard to believe it's been so long since the last show. Racing games seem to be the hit of any video game system and they keep on coming out with others. From as long as I can remember, the Need for Speed series was always one of the top racing games you'd always jump to. But over the last couple years and last few releases by EA with their Need for Speed series, just hasn't done that. It hasn't been that prize racing game that we'd expect to come from the Need for Speed series. I'm a racing. I'm not a racing Need for Speed because it's not been good. It's not been good. Well, all that change as EA ramps up its realism with the new Need for Speed Swift coming out. I guess what we've kind of been missing, missing, missing from the Need for Speed series is that realism. The one that we want from the Gran Turismos or the Forzas. We had your basic licensed cars, but, you know, just didn't seem to spend that time on it. The, it's almost like EA has so much power and they use that to sell games. And that's just not going to cut it anymore. What EA is hoping to do is increase their realism, as I mentioned. And by that, they've spent more detail on the physics of the vehicles. They've spent more detail on the... Well, the detail. So the interior view now is going to have more realistic, uh, you know, the, the RPM gauge is going to work, the speedometer is going to work, but it's going to look just like the actual car would. The example they give on their website is even with the new 2009 Corvette, they're saying the heads-up display is pretty much identical to what the real car is. I can't wait to see it when it comes out, and let's see if we can bring back what we're familiar with video games when someone says, hey, what kind of racing games do you play? Oh, what, maybe Need for Speed? This is a tech show, and I like to kind of stay with more, you know, all home entertainment tech or just the, the different types of gadgets and tech that we could purchase at your retail store. But there's no reason why I can't kind of jump over to the technology of cars. What if, what if a company from Frankfurt, a smart little chap, chap, chap by the name of Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy, I have no idea. What if, what if we could have an air powered car? And that was just recently introduced at the Geneva Auto Show. That's unbelievable. No gas, no nothing, but a air canister in the back of it that you had to fill up and go. This vehicle is called the AirPod. Okay, well, I don't know if they could have maybe came up with something a little more unique than the AirPod, but that is what it's called. And I guess it is a pod-type style car running on, well, air, so together that's an air pod. Okay, so the AirPod vehicle is small, holding just three passengers. So it's one up front, more away of a motorcycle style. And instead of a steering wheel, it's a joystick. So for you flight simulator fans out there, rock on, go get yourself your AirPod today. And it's MDI is the name of the company that made it. They claim a range more than 112 miles in an urban setting and less than two minutes to refill the 46 gallon air tank. Driving home, parking in your garage, turn on your air compressor, plugging in, filling it up. And they're saying they're gonna probably hope to have some depots. Now this is European and they're saying about one euro to fill this saying less than two minutes to fill the tank. Even though the AirPod can reach speeds of less than 45 miles per hour, the air-powered engine produces only eight horsepower, suggesting slow acceleration. But that's besides the point. A company is able to make this right now, and it works. Imagine now with some more time that they're gonna be able to put a larger horsepower engine, something that's able to go for a longer distance, larger miles. This is incredible. This is exactly what the world needs in this automotive industry. Now the car is not the prettiest, but neither is a smart car in my opinion, and it's very similar to the smart car, very round and bubbly, but that's what we're trying to do, get the lowest and smallest possible. Because of its low horsepower, the AirPods coming in extremely light at only 485 pounds. Because the air tank and the engine doesn't take up much room, the AirPod is devoted to uh, passenger space. The car is a three-wheeler, an emission-free, air-powered car. Look out, world! What would it sound like when it backfires? It'd be like a fart or something. <laughs> Halo Wars was a surprise for me. And what I mean, what I mean about that is we're, we're traditionally used to Halo as being a first-person shooter. Now, to bring it out into an RTS, that's really, really daring. Maybe Bungie is, uh, you know, kind of hit the nail on the head. I got it right! Get the head on the nail! I hit the nail on the head. Halo Wars, real-time strategy for the rest of us. And what they mean by that, I got this off of Crave. They're saying that, you know, the whole premise around the, the, 
the RTS games in the past have been quite difficult with the uh, consoles. The controllers just didn't make it that easy. You almost needed a mouse all the time. But from the way Halo has come across with the, the Halo Wars, they're saying it's not that hard. I've tried the demo and they're absolutely right. Now, the difference between this and let's say the Command of Conquerors or the Age of Empires... Hi. Their main goal in this game, game, game was to be solely focused on the combat. Where you had to build your community, you had to put up your war factories, you had to recruit and make uh, your, your soldiers. But that's not the main goal. Because if you're focusing solely on that, by the time you're done making your beautiful little uh, headquarters, chances are you're getting your ass kicked on the other side of it. And that's not what we want to do. So you want to focus on them, get your soldiers out there as quick as you can, have them ready to protect your base, take it to the other side. Halo Wars automates much of the tedious resource gathering and construction, as I mentioned, to instead focus on the combat, which is that of Halo fans. That's what Halo fans want anyway. And as for now, the launch of Halo Wars has not been an amazing success, but give it time. Let's see what all the Halo fans are going to say about it. Are they going to be disappointed because it's not a first-person shooter? Are they going to be excited because now they're going to be able to implement a whole world, be able to control a whole army opposed to just, you know, the Master Chief? Only time will tell. This show has been brought to you by xboxsyndicate.com. Go up and sign up today. Go over and sign up today at xboxsyndicate.com and you won't regret it. You'll be one happy camper. It's free. Well, everybody, you managed to make it through another show. Thank you. Because I'm Craig Hillier. Craig Hillier. Craig Hillier. Tech Tech. And you, once again, have been watching Tech Tech. Make sure you watch Tech Tech. It's Tech Tech. So check it out. Send me an email at hilliercraig at gmail.com. Check out my site at TechTacTV.com. TechTacTV.com. And I will see you next week.